Hello and welcome to the video. It's time for my annual reminder about winter flying tips. Now it's that time of year where the big fleecy tops are out so you'll see these in the videos and uh, the tan has completely disappeared so I'm back to my normal pasty Englishman appearance. But there are some other things that you need to think about when you get into winter and I find that when I forget some of the golden rules like never leave your LiPo batteries charging unattended, things like always triple check the polarity of your power supply before you plug your battery in when you built something, every time I kind of forget one of those, the hobby just kind of gives me a little bit of kick in the backside to remind myself I'm being silly. So this video, for those of you that have been flying for a long time, nothing in here is going to be new to you. It's all stuff we've all been doing for a long time. However, it is a reminder to do some of the stuff that maybe you haven't done since last winter. And for those of you especially who have joined the radio control hobby, then there are some differences. Your models will behave differently in winter than they do in summer, and there are some extra little tips and tricks about how to manage it all. So stay tuned. There are links down below if you're interested, but I would just get yourself a coffee or a cup of tea and kind of sit back and let me just remind you of all the stuff that we should be doing. Now it's winter. The main thing that you need to remember in winter flying is that batteries are not as efficient when they are cold. It relies on a chemical reaction to release the energy that's inside into electricity that we can use to power the model. However, when it's cold, that reaction, that chemical reaction is a lot more sluggish. So you'll probably get about 20% less flying time and you'll see more voltage sag in your packs as well. You need to keep the packs warm along with lots of other things like your goggles and yourself and your hands. Speaking of things like that, then you will get a lot colder in winter. Your hands, particularly as they get older like me, uh, will lose some of their dexterity and will start to get stiff. Do use things like hand warmers, not only in the box for your LiPo batteries to keep them warm, but also have them in your pocket so you can keep your fingers nice and nimble inside your gloves between the flights. One of the big issues with winter is that moisture, mud and grit will get absolutely everywhere. The grass that you're landing on will typically be wet, so uh, particularly multi-rotors will kick that into all of the exposed electronics, so be aware of that. There are things that we can do to help, things like conformal coating, but actually just taking something like a landing mat can make an awful big difference, because if it lands in a puddle, because these things tend to be water magnets, it's like golf balls. When you hit a golf ball, it will always either hit a tree or end up in the water. It's how it works. It's the same with radio control. Being ready to deal with that when it inevitably happens when you're flying in winter will help make sure that the model survives to summer. Lower light conditions will also tax some of the FPV cameras that have been working beautifully over in the summer with nice bright days where the ground is in full direct sunlight. In the winter, we're going to have low sun, which is going to be going directly into the camera. So cameras without wide dynamic range are really going to struggle to expose the ground. But similarly, when it's dark and overcast, if you're flying line of sight, then the models can disappear, particularly if they're made of white foam on a gloomy overcast day as you're flying around rather than that nice big white cross that you can see in the air easily it'll just fade into the clouds behind it and it'll be tricky to look at so the use of led lights uh, is very very helpful but also bright decals the other thing i would recommend is also make sure that you're installing things like beepers and buzzers when these things inevitably do come down where you're not expecting them to and then trying to find them can be really aided by using things like the rssi trick that i've already talked about but also by having a nice loud buzzer on there too it'll always land behind the clump of grass that you haven't looked behind and that's where it's going to sit there patiently running the battery down to the point where you can no longer find it with the rssi trick so with those headlines out of the way let's go through some of the detail the main one really is to remember that obviously in winter the northern hemisphere we're talking about here i can hear all of you southern hemisphere pilots complaining bitterly that i'm doing this at the wrong time of year it is going to be windier it's going to be wetter it's going to be an awful lot colder and the wind will affect not only the models but it'll also affect your ability as a pilot to maintain your concentration and have the dexterity that you did in the height of summer 
One of the things that I learned early on was to keep the goggles along with the battery inside the car when you're going to the field. Don't stick them in the back of the car where they're going to get cold, particularly with things like FBV goggles. As soon as you put them on, if those lenses are cold, they're going to start fogging up. I tend to just stick them inside my coat when I'm not wearing them and then just bring them out to use them and then stick them back in the coat to keep them warm. Similarly with batteries, batteries will not be happy if they get really cold. So I would keep them in a warm place until you need to use them. I have a friend of mine who suggests using things like a hand warmer pack, put one of those in the battery bag just to make sure that the batteries don't get too cold because the warmer they are the better they will perform. Be careful if you land and you get mud inside everything. If it's reasonably wet mud then I would just stop what you're doing and probably not fly that model again. I'd take it home and let it dry out in the centrally heated house. Once it has then use a soft brush to get as much of that off. The issue that I found is is that a lot of the fields that I seem to fly in have lots of bits of old iron. That kind of rust is kind of mixed in with the ground and that will just get sucked straight into the magnets if you agitate it and that can be a disaster for multi-rotor motors so i tend to bring it home let it dry out and then kind of brush it away so that anything that's been brushed away is being brushed away onto the paper that's underneath it not into the magnets themselves if it's not too bad then you know what i always have a towel with me so i can wipe things off and i would always recommend taking a towel to the field in the winter keep it at the bottom of the bag because the bottom of things like fixed wing models is always is going to be absolutely wet through and all that's going to do is just make the boot of your car or the back seat completely wet on the way home so wipe that down and then you just have to dry the towel out and everything else is going to be good the other big note on this slide about the colder conditions is the fact that not only would the batteries perform uh, in a much less satisfactory way when they're really cold but the plastics on your models will perform differently too. You will notice if you've ever tried to unravel uh, one of those hose pipes that goes onto a reel, if you try to do that in kind of two, three degree temperatures versus the middle of summer, it's a very stiff piece of plastic versus the nice pliable hose that you had in the summertime. Things like the ABS we have in the props and lots of other pieces that in the summer wouldn't have taken any damage will be brittle in the colder weather and will potentially sustain damage in a crash that wouldn't have been an issue in summer. So triple check your models after flying, particularly if you've had an unintended landing. Double check that there are no hairline cracks or nothing has come apart. Things that you wouldn't think have damaged stuff may damage stuff in winter and it pays to triple check your models before and after you fly just to make sure that nothing has been damaged. I really like flying over snow-covered landscapes. It is beautiful. It's like flying over Narnia. It doesn't happen an awful lot here in the UK, but when it does, it's really fun. But be aware that that, that snow will get into everything, particularly if it's fresh powdery snow. When your multi-rotor lands or your plane lands into it, it will be thrown into all of the motors and the props and the electronics. And I find that lots of planes that have lots of big air scoops to keep modern digital HD FPV systems just tend to act act like a snow shovel and they just kind of suck it all in so make sure that you get all the snow out before you leave the field as well because that'll just melt and that'll make the whole moisture situation a whole lot worse beware of lower light conditions the fpv cameras that most of us are using these days are much better than they used to be they have what's called a wide dynamic range so when the sun is in the low in the sky and maybe the clouds have disappeared you have those nice long shadows even at midday in the winter time when you're flying towards the sun it will beautifully expose the sky but in the old days it wouldn't expose the ground very well you'd basically be looking a silhouette of the ground rather than any detail. Bond cameras are an awful lot better but do test and be prepared to bring your model in. If you get up in the air you start flying around and realize that you can't see where you're going. Do remember that when you are looking away from the sun you won't have the same issue so use that as a way to get back if you do have that problem but just be cautious of that. For line of sight, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I think decals and LEDs are your best friend and always have somebody else with you uh, with a good pair of eyeballs so that they can see what's going on if you occasionally quickly lose orientation. This is why I really like things like iNav on my fixed wing models because if I do get into trouble, I can just get that return to home switch and it will kind of fly back to me and it will get close enough that we can easily reacquire it again. It just gives you that 
level of safety that if it does start to get a little bit tricky to see because maybe the cloud covers a little bit lower than you expected it's under the 400 feet legal ceiling as you kind of approach that you might kind of just dip into it just be ready for those kind of things do also watch out for higher wind and also wind that behaves in a slightly different way. I found that uh, flying on what feels like a calm day in winter can catch you out because you tend to find that rather than just having the thermal pockets like you do on a nice summer day, you find that at the ground it feels fine, it's good enough to throw the model into the air or to start flying your quad. And then as you get a little bit of altitude, typically above the height of the trees, you'll then suddenly think, oh, hang on a minute, there's a lot more wind about than expected be prepared for that to be prepared for wind to change have a look at the forecast and make sure that you are wrapping up nice and warm that wind chill will not only push your model around but it will make you an awful lot colder too so make sure that you as a pilot are keeping nice and warm my big tip for this is if you are flying in windy conditions, you will find that as you go down the field with the wind behind you, you will travel an awful lot quicker, uh, but it'll use an awful lot more battery to get back up the field flying into the wind because it's coming essentially upstream in that air current. Do think about that, remember that, and always keep a little bit extra in the tank, particularly when you consider that the battery is probably not going to be lasting as long because of the cold weather too. So that's kind of my just quick reminder on the things to think about when you are flying in the colder, windy, wintry conditions. I have already pulled out my wellies, I've got my scarf, I've got my cap, and my gloves and everything is ready. And I'm starting to fly with all of that stuff now. The big tips are remember that your batteries aren't going to last as long. Remember that plastics and foam and other things are going to be a lot more fragile in the cold. Remember to keep warm and keep all your equipment warm. Getting a coat that's a size too big is great. It means you can stick your goggles in there. You can keep the batteries in the pockets and keeping everything warm will keep them all performing really well. Anything with a lens will not like getting cold and will not like moisture. So do treat it like a little animal. Don't stick it in the boot where it's going to get really cold when you're driving to the field. Keep things like your goggles and your batteries in the car with you. And that way, as the car heater is running, it's also going to keep that stuff warm too. And then only pull it out of the car when you need it. Don't take them all out to the field at once where they're going to just sit on the very cold, wet ground and then lose that heat really quickly. So best of luck for all of you in the Northern Hemisphere that are winter flying. It's a fantastic time for you to go out and fly. There are a lot less dog walkers around than there was in summer. But also if you get an opportunity to fly over snow covered landscapes, they are fantastic. There are some beautiful views to be had flying in winter. Just take your time, be careful and you'll have an awful lot of fun. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.